Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen of the internet to episode 256 of Gaming the Industry. My name is Shank. I'm the associate editor for MMORPG.com, and we have uh, actual, like, legitimate, cool stuff to talk to you guys about today. Um, something that we've been complaining about for months, like actual months, finally happened. Um, but, of course, I'm not alone. I'm joined by my co-host, Brad for the Sundays. So, I would be streaming, but considering about 15, 20 minutes ago, my internet wasn't working um on my phone <clears throat> and now that it is it wasn't working on my pc i should say and now that it is working um i'm getting less than five megabits per second upload and i'm not getting anywhere near my one gig download speed i'm supposed to have um i decided it might be more beneficial for me to just be able to be on the show instead of trying to like finagle with the stream and then have it cut out halfway through and have me join on my phone which happened two weeks ago so yeah um Real quick, Real Garrick, quick. Garrick in my Twitter, uh, Twitch chat says, Ohayu gozaimasu. Ohayo gozaimasu. Garrick pushed the payload. Oh, it's also not the fucking morning, Garrick. It is somewhere. It also says you're offline, Shink. Nope. <laughs> there we go. There, there we go. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, sure, it is in Japan, Garrick, but we're not in fucking Japan. We're always in Japan, Brantford. Where's your respect? Um, well, they didn't win the war, man. Sakai. They won the only war that matters, which was the war against the Mongols. I may or may not be playing Ghost of Tsushima. I was going to say, it's less of a war, <laughs> more of like a failed invasion, but that that's cool. Um Brian would be chiming in right about now, but he made a very insensitive joke and his uh, PC just crashed right afterwards before he could say it was a joke. So he's scrambling to, to you know to figure that out and get his PC working. Um, but his Japanese is not improving because Shank's the one teaching him, as we just heard him butchering Ohio gozaimasu. Uh, I'm supposed to say this with as much urgency as one can muster, totaruwaru, but I'm not going to. Totaruwaru! Uh, holy shit, you took out like most of the show summary. That's awesome. Uh, I have a talking point, which I don't because this entire evening is going to be dominated by one talking point, which is that for, for the past six, seven months now, that we've kind of known that these new consoles were going to exist and potentially release this year. We have been complaining that the neither company will tell you when you can get it or how much it's going to cost. Uh, well, one of them finally blinked yesterday. Uh, maybe it's because of leaks. Maybe it's because they manufactured those leaks. Who knows? Um, but we, we finally know that the Xbox Series S is confirmed. And we also know pricing of release dates for both that and the Xbox Series X. Uh, but this is Shank saying Microsoft sucks at naming their products for simplicity and parents who don't follow gaming. He's just going to rant here. So <laughs> strap in, I guess. Um <laughs> But first, you, you alluded that the fact that you are playing Jin Sakai in Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I'm curious if you've ever made it off the first island yet. No. Okay. Also, but I was gone really for like not. a week. So that. Right. Kinda... You were wearing your monogram socks and. But not and, socks, ties. And, and ordaining people. Yep. Well, yeah. You weren't actually doing. You weren't ordaining. You were simply consummate. No, you weren't even doing that. You were. I was officiating. <laughs> officiate that's the word i'm looking for the most atheist person i know is an ordained minister it's just the irony the, it was the awesome layers. i had the power for all the powers i can now marry anyone in california i was gonna say in one specific state yes the fifth largest economy <laughs> in the world i can wed anyone in that this is amazing i have so much power you guys now I wonder if that if that extends to polyamorous couples. Could you marry a threesome? Probably. Okay. I I have all of the power, guys. I was really hoping you were going to extend that silence out. Probably because um, I am probably I, I am definitely the most you know megalomaniacal person I know, and I now have all of the power. Uh, speaking of power, though, you've been playing. Ghost of Tsushima, you just said. Uh, I, 
I'm kind of interested in where you are and why you haven't made it off the first island yet, because I think at this point it's kind of getting comical. Well, okay, no, you, you should not be surprised I haven't made it off the first. I mean, you really shouldn't be surprised about that. Um, but I have done a couple Since more I was surprised. Quests. I, I said did. I'm getting, getting tired of you not being off the first island. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I have uh, I did a couple more Mythic Quests, talk. so now I have the Longbow, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. And because I have so many resources, just because I explore literally everything, I was pretty much able to instantly upgrade it almost all the way. Um, That's... Uh, I, no, I don't mean to interrupt again, but that's I. I had that happen to me every single time too, and I wasn't exploring literally everything. So I think it's just the game is too generous. I, I have legitimately maxed out a couple of my inventory slots. I didn't know. I didn't even know that was even possible. But like for mm -hmm. example, I can't carry any more bamboo, mm -hmm. and I haven't been able to for like six hours. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. th there must be some cap somewhere. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I got the longbow. I, what is it that? Uchitsune or whatever the hell that mythic dude's name is. Um, and then Uchitsune? there was one, right. And then there was the other one where I figured out I got the heavenly strike move. That's one of my favorite moves, which is so useful in duels, which that was super useful when I was doing the Uchitsune mythic thing against that guy. Mm -hmm. Cause I could kill him basically very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so there's, I have, I'm up to the point where I have uh, Taka who's building me something in his forge. So I've done my four sort of quote unquote story quests. Um, and I need to go back and talk to Taka because apparently he's going to give me some, some tool yeah. to help against the Mongolians. I, I don't know. I have no idea what it is, um, but I have about a, like the, the upper left quadrant of the, the first Island is still unexplored. So I'm slowly, the, the game does a good job of kind of naturally moving you through the land. So I've got a couple of quests near there, which I'm going to go do like side quests, go do that and just naturally do my exploration there and then probably go talk to Taka. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't really raise any more platitudes on this game because everything that could be said has been said. It's just a fantastic game. Um, and if there is a PS5 port, literally, I don't, it doesn't even need ray tracing. Like performance, we'll, we'll get into this when we're talking about the Xbox stuff here. But honestly, these next generation consoles absolutely have to focus on frame rate. I mean, this is, yeah. this is this is an advantage that P it's not even an advantage. It's an expectation that PC gamers have had on their platform for decades, decades. Mm -hmm. And for consoles to just now start talking about, actually, you know what? We probably should start looking at performance. I mean, people always point to the Call of Duty and say, well, Call of Duty is 60 FPS. Well, no, it's not really. It's a it's targeting 60 FPS. It doesn't mean it targeting and locked. Not the same thing at all. Um, a lot of other games this generation have had sort of unlocked frame rates, but um, just given the way TV display technology works and the fact that it's not variable refresh rate, it actually creates a worse feeling experience than just a locked 30 or a locked 60. Uh, so if they created a PS5 port with just a 60 frames per second update on Ghost of Tsushima, I would replay the game. That is how much performance really matters and in, in this game especially too i can legitimately feel a delay like an input i can really feel the input latency and it's specifically just on this game none of my other ps5 4 games do this um simple things like even just like selecting things in the menu like it i can notice it when the when i press the button versus when the cursor actually moves to the next item um it's it's simple things like that where just small quality of life things which over the course of 50 60 hours really do add up mm -hmm. so i i want i want a 60 frames per second version of this game um uh, like i said i i would play it because it's it's just going to be better but uh yeah ghost of tsushima super fun and i'm um, probably going to try to hop back into flight sim again I know you guys streamed that when I was gone, but I uh, definitely want to hop back that uh, back back into that. And um, yeah, that's a game that I cannot wait to test the thirty ninety on. Yeah, we did a uh, hometown tour where we each kind of we, we flew in each other's cities uh, on Saturday. So we started in Seattle, we went to San Francisco, to Vegas, and then to Houston. Um, it was a lot of fun, and uh, for some reason, Brian just forgot how to fly. 
So it was also pretty <laughs> hilarious. Um, but yeah, no, uh, we played that on Saturday, but the, the main games that I have been playing this week, I, and it's kind of interesting that I've had time to play it. I think it's because I actually took the weekend off uh, instead of um, working on Monday like I would normally do because it's not, it's a, it's a bank holiday. It's not really like a holiday everyone observes in the U.S., but <clears throat> we've been kind of being worked to the to our bone at my SEO job. And I'm getting a little burnt out with the MMO gig because I haven't really had a, like more than a two or three days off uh, since I started it a year ago. Uh, you've had a couple trips and uh, you've worked on, on some of those too. Uh, so you really haven't had like an actual vacation from it as well. Um, but I, I was starting to get a little burnt out. So I just said, fuck it. I'm going to take the weekend off. I didn't write news for the weekend either. I don't know if you noticed that I just, took the weekend off and played Crusader Kings three for most of it. And, uh, I, I really love paradox, uh, their strategy games. My, one of my favorite strategy games of all time is Europa Universalis four. Um, I started playing that when it first came out back in like 2014. And I've got like 500 hours in that game. I love grand strategy games where it's, it's a true sandbox. You could follow history if you want, or, you could take like the Vietnam, you know, nations and consolidate the whole of Southeast Asia and invade like Australia if you really wanted to. Uh, it it adds. There's just so much you can do in these games. Crusader Kings is even more granular. So where Europa is on a nation level, so you control a full nation. Uh, that just happens to have leaders that come and go depending on your government system. Uh, Crusader Kings, you control a character and every single playable faction has a playable character. And those characters have other characters they interact with in terms of like their family members, their courtiers, their vassals, their mayors, their earls, um, their subjects, random characters that just kind of crop up as events happen. And every single character has an opinion of every other character in the game. Um, and it really lends itself to some great self-made storytelling. Uh, Paradox's motto is we create the games, you tell the stories. It's so true with the Crusader Kings uh, series. And Crusader Kings 3, I think, is probably the most accessible this series has ever been. Not to say that it's less complex. It's actually more, I think. Um, but the presentation of the Clausewitz engine is a lot more streamlined. It's got an actual tutorial, whereas Crusader Kings 2 and even Europa and Heart of Iron 4 suffer from just piss poor tutorials. Um, it does still leave a lot to be discovered on your own, but it, it allows you to do some really cool, crazy things. Like uh, I have been reading the Saxons, Saxon Stories. It's the book series that the Last Kingdom TV show is based off of. Destiny is all. Yeah, it's interesting that th that's the tagline in the show, but um, Uhtred in the book is always saying fate is inexorable. Uh, but I think Netflix wisely understood that most people don't know what inexorable means. So How do you... Uh, God damn yeah, it. Yeah. Um, so, what's it, yeah, what's it, it called? The Saxon Stories. It starts with the Last Kingdom. I'm on book five right now, which is is it as um, good as the show? Dude, it is. It is better, but you have to be careful because um, I'm doing the audiobook, but I actually also own all the physical books too, and I'll I'll follow along with the audiobook, or if I don't want to listen to it, I'll just pick it up where I left off from the audiobook. Um, but Depending on the licensing for the individual audiobook, you're either going to get the Jonathan Keeble version, which is the one I recommend, or you're going to get some, f like, f I hate using this phrase, but it's the only thing I can think of to explain. You get some fruity fanboy reading the reading the uh, novel, and he completely emasculates um, Uhtred. Do they have I, Do they have Ivor singing in the background? No. God no. damn it. No, um, it's so good though. It's so good, but because of that, I Crusader King series gives you multiple timelines and multiple p parts of the world that had interesting things going on during those timelines. And the very first one you can choose is eight sixty seven during the uh, during the War of the Lothbrokstons' revenge on England after uh, King Isla in Northumbria killed Ragnar Lothbrok. 
Uh, so you can play as any one of his sons as they're invading in Northumbria Wait, and fighting so, Mercia. And so, so this, so this, this game is taking the route that Ragnar Lothbrok was an actual person. Ragnar Lothbrok was an actual person. Yes. No, he wasn't though. Uh, he, he was. He was like cobbled together, dude. Ra Ragnar Loth the, the Vikings version was cobbled together, but Ragnar Lothbrok was an actual person. I don't think so, man. His his family literally is the founding family of the king. I, no, 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 no. I, I have, I, I, yeah, like the the infamous children of Ragnar Lothbrok are the ones that actually did the exploration and settling, but their father was mythologized. Yeah, um, according to Crusader Kings and pretty much most of English, Danish, Norse, and Swedish history, uh, Ragnar Lothbrok lived. And his kids lived, and his kids founded the kingdoms of Dublin, uh, the kingdoms in northern, the Viking kingdoms of Scotland. Um, Halfdan is who founded, who basically took over York and changed the name from Everwick to Jorvik, which is where we get the modern day word for York. Um, yeah, it, it, I, you ask any like Norse. And Viking scholar, most people will say Ragnar Lothbrok. He himself lived, whether he was as, uh, you know, crazy, um, <clears throat> you know, heroic as he's mythologized. Probably not, but his family literally founded like four king like dynasties. Yeah, yeah, in, that, that's the thing. North. Like, I, his his yeah. kids were definitely real. Obviously, well, but... I mean, obviously, if his kids were real, then he had to have been real. Whether he was as mythologized. Whether the mythology fits the actual person, that's the that's the debate. Well, the debate that I've seen is that the, his children were the children of some Viking warriors that happened to go on and like do these things. But whether they yeah. were this, they were all the sons of this one guy. Was yeah, no, he he was he was a real Viking. I'm looking at it on uh, Britannia, uh, Britannica, the encyclopedia right now. Uh, he was a warrior. <laughs> yeah, he was a <laughs> Danish king and Viking warrior who flourished in the ninth century. So, I mean, even according to like the encyclopedia that Wikipedia takes their sources from, well, uh, right. Ragnar Lothbrok was, was a real person. That just um, makes him even cooler because for the last few years, I definitely thought he was some like mythologized no, no. superhero that I mean, happened if, to have real sons. Keep in mind, the Last Kingdom series is written by an English historian and his sons and him himself, the legend of Ragnar Lothbrok is featured all throughout the books and he's hinted at in the show. I mean, you meet Ivar and you meet Uba. Um, I think you actually just meet Uba in the show, but you meet Ivar, Ivarson, uh, which is Ivar the Boneless's son. You meet Ivar the Boneless at some point in the book. Anyways, um, Viking history aside, <laughs> because I'm reading that book series, I decided to play as Halfdan, uh, white shirt of Jorvik, um, because he was the most centralized uh, Danish uh, invader in the British Isles. Um, and within about i would say the first 20 minutes of being in the game i had already taken over northumbria and then i sat down and i played this for about 15 hours this weekend and what makes crusader kings cool is like i said you're, you're playing a character but that character will obviously age and die because this is still you know set in history it may not be historical in terms of like how the game actually progresses. It's really dependent upon your, your moves though. Uh, historical things will kind of kick up when they would have happened in real life, depending on some of the decisions you made. So if you're playing as Alfred of Wessex, for instance, you have the ability to form England and fight off the great Danish army, uh, the great heathen army in 867, I think is, is, not 867, but uh, 887, I think is what it is in real life. Um, for me, I decided that my main goal, and this is one of the things you really have to, if you're ever going to play a Crusader Kings game, you need to set up your own goals because the game is not going to give you any direction. Um, so my main goal during Half Dunn's life was I wanted to conquer all of Mercia. I wanted to control Northumbria, Jorvik, and mercia i also wanted to make sure that my kids were going to inherit all of this but at the end of the day i wanted my heir which is the character i was going to end up playing once Halfdan died 
was going to still be in charge of all of it. So I, I didn't want my kingdom to get broken up you know, by all my kids. Um, I also wanted to essentially give myself a way into the line of succession for uh, both Sweden, which is uh, Halfton's brother Bjorn, as well as uh, Sireland, which is basically Denmark, which was Halfton's brother Sigurdr, who didn't come to England. He stayed there and became, you know, kind of the lineage of all the Danish kings um, of history. And I also wanted to make sure that my line was seeded into Ivar, uh, the bonelesses, because I wanted his territories without having to eventually stab one of my, you know, family members in the back down the road. What ended up happening was I lost my heir, two of my sons, my wife was kidnapped, and my two daughters were also kidnapped uh, in an attack by whales. Wow. I went to war, had all of my sons commanding these armies because my sons were all Viking raiders and they all had high martial skills and Sigurd died. He was my heir. Fine. I've got five other sons. I'll be okay. Uh, then Guthrith dies. Then Halfdan Halftonson dies. <laughs> then the one I named Gandalf gets kidnapped and he gets murdered by the, uh, the King of Wales. Mercia sensed my weakness, and so they invaded me to take back some land that apparently Jorvik had taken over before the game started. Um, it did not, my first attempt at this did not go well. So I restarted my game <laughs> with the same goals in mind. And as of last night, I played Halfdan for 31 years in game, and then he died. But he died as king of Jorvik because I had amassed so much in terms of land and wealth at that point. Because I had taken over East Anglia, I had taken over um, Mercia and parts of Wales. I also controlled Dublin and a little bit of Scotland at that point. Um, I was able to form the Kingdom of Mercia. Uh, not Kingdom of Mercia, Kingdom of Jorvik is what I ended up calling it. So it literally within a month after forming that kingdom, Halfden dies. And I become, uh, my character transitions to my heir, which was my original second in line because my original heir also died in that initial war. Only he also got the lover's pox from sleeping with his sister. So it was just a weird messed up thing. Uh, so now my goal is to conquer Wessex with Guthrith and leave the entirety of the English Isles, except for Scotland and Ireland. Uh, so to basically just England, I guess, to, <laughs> to his son, who I, I had him name Ragnar after his, his elder. Um, I really enjoy these strategy games. I don't know if you guys can tell. I could talk about this all night. I love grand strategy games. This is definitely kind of one of those games I don't think you would ever play, but you'd probably enjoy watching. Yeah, I was just, I was literally about to say that exact same thing. Yeah, but it's also one of those where I think if you actually sat down and learned the engine, you, the way your mind works, the machinations that kind of run in your mind and the Machiavellian uh, style way you look at the world, sometimes uh, you'd probably be very good at it. <laughs> Um, the other game I've been playing is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Amiibo! Uh, I, uh, I bought that on Xbox on Friday when it came out, and I don't regret it at all. Rich. I have... A not No, not Rich. That's the only game we'll be buying all year, I think. Um, <clears throat> rich. Yeah, so uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, is they're really good. They're a lock 60 FPS on all of the consoles except for the base consoles. Um... I really should have bought it on Epic, but I I didn't want to go through the hassle of hooking my computer up to my TV in my bedroom. And I would have rather just played it on my console. So once I saw that Digital Foundry reported that it was a lock 60 on the Xbox One X, I just bought it there and have been enjoying the Ska Field soundtrack ever since. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 soundtrack are literally like the greatest soundtracks, I think, of my youth. They're so. I think I would good. agree with that. I think I'd agree with that. Um, they've added a lot of songs to the soundtracks too, though uh, this this time around. So I I love the granular control you have over the experience. So you can you can have the modern tool uh, move set, which is a combination of Tony Hawk's one and two, as well as bringing some ideas in from Tony Hawk's three, or you can just have the Tony Hawk one move set 
the Tony Hawk 2 moveset. You can also completely alter what songs play on your playlist, which isn't new for games. Madden has let you do that for years, but it was a nice touch. So if you just want to listen to the original Tony Hawk 1 soundtrack while you're playing, you can do that. If you only listen to if you only want to listen to the only song on that soundtrack that matters, which is Goldfinger's uh, Superman, you can do that as well. Uh, the thing I, I, I'm still kind of getting used to is this is on Unreal Engine 4, and the physics in Unreal Engine 4 are obviously more precise than the physics in whatever engine Neversoft made in 1999. So the timing isn't exactly... It's close, but it's not exactly like it was in 1999. Then again, you're also operating on th- less than 30 FPS in 1999. All, all I want to know is can you just keep chaining things with the manual? Yeah. You can still do that, and because they also brought in the uh, the the shift in uh, from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Three, oh, the when revert, you land the revert, the revert, yeah, you can you can do that as well. Um, so you can you can revert into a manual, you can keel flip into a manual, you can grind into a manual, you can land a trick into a manual. Uh, you can just continually chain things if you if you have the skill, which I'm starting to build up because I did not have the skill when I started playing this. It's been over 20 years since I've played these games. Yeah. Joe was watching me play the other day and he was just laughing at how horrible I was. (laughs) And uh, today I, right before the show, actually I was playing it a little bit and that's when I found out my internet cut out because I was playing online and then it just stopped working. Um, And I was able to like chain together 20, 30,000 point combos because I'd finally unlocked it. Like my brain went back 20 years and was like, Oh yeah, this is how you play. I think so. if I played that game because I grew up playing PlayStation, I would have to play it with a PS4 controller just because my my any and all muscle memory that I have left of that game is tied purely to the D-pad, like 100% to the D-pad. Yeah, well, you can use the D-pad in this, but I get what you're saying. Um, that That's kind of my issue because I play all of the games nowadays. Most games don't even utilize the D-pad for movement. Uh, so I find myself reverting just to the analog stick and i have to force myself back down to the d-pad but um yeah it's, it's a lot of fun i think you would if you liked the games back back then and who didn't yeah if you didn't you're a heathen um just seriously get, get it if you don't get it right now just wait for it to get on sale it's ob- it's honestly incredibly well made on pc according to digital foundry so oh really um yeah it's on epic game store uh it's, it's I guess it's apparently really well made there and I kind of regret not getting it there, but hmm. at the same time, I'm really happy to be playing it. Um, let's, uh, let's check, uh, let's check green man. Shall we? I've well, okay. I'll just continue to talk about Crusader Kings three then. Uh, so one of the things I ended up having to do before I formed the kingdom of Jorvik was I had like six daughters with like three concubines and my wife. But the interesting thing about this is Crusader Kings, it looks at the historical records and what we think we know about these rulers and will literally assign a sexual orientation to them. So one of the things you can do in this game is you can actually try to seduce other rulers or other characters in the game to kind of do your bidding, uh, take them into your bed, become their lovers, and then they'll obviously be more receptive to the other things you want them to do. But because I was playing Hafdan, who apparently history thinks might have been gay, um, I couldn't do that. But he had no problem knocking up his concubines. I had like 17 kids by the time he died. Three of which I had to imprison for fornicating with their nephew. In the Game of so, yeah. Thrones. Yeah, it was a very Cersei, like almost Cersei-like situation here. Uh, no, it was Cersei because she she ended up, she did do that. With, no, it was a cousin. It was her cousin. Yeah. A uh, quick Windows 10 update. Da, 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 da. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 on Epic is 40 bucks. Um, I could not find it on Green Man or CD Keys. That's yeah, cheaper than it is on Xbox, though. It was 49 on Xbox. Consoles. Okay. Um, well, the deluxe, consoles. the deluxe edition on PC is 49 Oh, well, that's actually the one I bought. So, okay. I bought the deluxe edition because I wanted the soundtrack. Okay. Rich. Um, yeah, so a couple of, uh, uh, really, yeah, I guess it's really one major thing has happened in the last uh, couple of days here in the games industry. Um, and this is purely, uh, surrounding, uh, Dark Riku in my Twitch asked, do you think the PS5 will be cheaper than the Series X? Um, no, my short answer is no, but we'll get to that in a second here. Uh, so we, 
had some information finally about Microsoft's consoles, at least. Both, first of all, the Series S, the long rumored and just worst kept industry quote unquote secret, apart from the potentially the 30 series graphics cards. Um, finally confirmed by Microsoft. It is called the Xbox Series S. Uh, in my opinion, I, I actually do love the look of this thing. I think it's really, really cool. It's got a cool little like minimalistic slash retro ish vibe to it. It is discless, meaning it's an all digital machine, which personally I have no issue with because that's the future anyway. Um, and we have finally confirmed release dates for the Xbox Series S, the Series X, and also their pricing. But before we get into that, and you probably heard me hesitate for a second there, and it's because I was trying to remember what name I was talking about. Which brings me to my very first point, and it's it's an issue that I've had with Microsoft basically this entire generation. Uh, they absolutely suck at branding and naming their products. They are horrible, horrible at naming. It's not just the Xbox consoles. Um, you talk, you take a look at their Surface thing, your, their Surface devices. Surface has changed names and has meant like three different devices in the last. 10 plus years it's it's just that microsoft does not know how to name or brand anything and i say this not as somebody who follows tech but you know for people who don't follow tech uh, i was listening to podcast unlock this is ign's podcast um because they were talking about the i i saw the 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 title of it was talking about the series s and i was like you know what let me just listen to this so I was listening to it while I was working and even the people on the show. Now, these are people who are experts on Xbox. OK, they have been following Xbox basically pretty much their whole career. Ryan McCaffrey is one of them. Um, and they kept messing up between Xbox One X, Series S, Series X, Xbox One S. And it's understandable these products have such identical names that when you have people whose job it is to cover these products and they are experts at this and i'm not knocking ign here it is completely understandable that they would get mixed up when they were talking about these products because the branding and the naming is so similar so if people like them people like ryan mccaffrey people like me i'm not going to speak on behalf of bradford but people like me whose job it is to follow the industry if we are having to have to like pause and try to understand what these products are and we are in the industry what's going to happen when you get a parent who goes to a store doesn't really follow gaming but just know that their kids want an xbox like what what are they going to look for it's it's contrast this with playstation okay i want what PlayStation? PlayStation 3, 4, 5. Easy. Numbers. Extremely simple, extremely straightforward. You yeah. know exactly which one is the newest one. You know exactly which one is the most powerful one because it's in the name. But with Microsoft, because they have chosen this SX thing and their consoles sound so similar. I mean, they just, they really, really do. Uh, it's, I, I hate Microsoft's branding for these products. They, they really should have made this easier. For, uh, and again, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking for people who don't follow gaming and parents specifically who going into the holiday season, probably going to be under a shitload of stress trying to buy something for their kids if they can afford it. And I, <laughs> I'm sorry, like yeah. the, 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 their naming scheme is awful. I, I genuinely hate their naming scheme. It really it really does bother the hell out of me for, and it has been for seven years. Yeah, as, as a parent who does follow gaming, um, I have I have friends who who don't who have kids about Noel's age now, a little bit younger, a little bit older, um, <clears throat> who are asking me, you know, what the big difference is. Their, their issue isn't necessarily the name. I, I think because it kind of, this follows what the current Xboxes have done with the Xbox one S and the Xbox one X it's following that same suit. Um, it's probably a little bit easier than it might have been had it not had that. Not to say that it's good. Not to say that it won't cause issues. I think because it it does follow the trend that we currently have with the current consoles, it's a little bit a little bit easier in people's minds. The issue for me is that these the parents that go into the store 
who don't know exactly which one their kids want or don't understand that there is a difference between them and may not get someone in may get someone in the store who's not knowledgeable exactly. about it exactly exactly that's that to me is the is the problem i i can't tell you how many times i've been sitting in the i've been standing in the electronic section just kind of looking around as i typically do when i go to these stores i always look at the video game section even though i don't buy games it's fun from to browse. these stores now yeah it's fun to browse and people will just know for some reason people will just know that i know what i'm looking at and they'll ask me instead of asking the store employee um Garrick says in the chat, as a previous GameStop store manager, this is the worst naming nomenclature that Microsoft could have gone with. There's now no way to shorthand the name, otherwise it gets confused with Xbox One systems. Exactly. I think the way you shorthand it is you just say Series S or Series X. There is still a way to shorthand. Um, in terms of writing it down, it's a little bit harder, but I, I think you can just go with 1X, 1S, Series S, Series X. Um if you listen to any of Microsoft's marketing, they're saying the full name every single time. Then again, this is the same company that to this day puts in this press releases, the Xbox One, the all-in-one games and entertainment system from yes. Microsoft. Yes. So, um, I'm sorry. I mean, it's, it's just, just what's 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 easier, saying that or just saying, "Oh, give me a PS5." Oh no, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not saying that that it's good. I just think it's. It's a little it's bit consistently easier, bad with what they have done with their current yeah, naming scheme. But I think because of that consistency, it is a little bit easier for it to stick in people's minds. Like I said, I have because I remember going back to the Xbox One X and us having the same conversation about the naming there. And my big issue was the fact that parents who don't follow gaming will have a hard time figuring out which one this is. That's not what I'm hearing from parents that I know who don't follow gaming, but their kids have been asking for this. It's less to do with the name itself. They understand the different names. It's the difference between what those names mean has been the problem. Um, yeah. And hopefully. I, and I think with uh, using a number scheme like Sony's been doing for 25, 30 years is very clear cut because you don't have to know the differences yeah. to just know five is bigger than four, right? Like that's just something well, everybody understands. But then you get into the issue of... Uh, what is if Sony's going to have a disc system? What's it going to be named? Uh, which I PS5 I think about, I think all they, digital, PS5, yeah. PS5 all digital. Very simple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I actually, as I said, that I thought they in my mind's eye, I was like, didn't they actually announce a digital they system? Already? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they did. Um, so who knows? Um, Anyway, so that's I, I just wanted to get on this right because it really pisses me. Like, I cannot stand and I. I think for me, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt again. I think for me, the issue is less that I don't understand the difference is between the, the names, but because they're so similar, I will, even in the show, I've already fumbled them at least once. Yeah, I fumbled them at least a couple times on the show. And it's, it's, so it's, it's just, uh, it, this is, this all ties back into the marketing because branding is marketing. Um, and it just completely ties back to, I just hate Microsoft's marketing. Branding is just one piece of that. And this I I these are the worst names they could have come up with for a new generation because how are you gonna clearly differentiate between a previous and a new if the names are so 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 close? Really, there's only one word that's a difference, and it's one versus series, and it's 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 bad branding. It's just terrible. Um, that rant aside, finally got information. So here's some um here's some information basically. What this is, the Xbox Series S, and I'm, I'm going to mess up the name this podcast, just you're going to have to deal with it. We touched, I touched on frame rate at the, uh, at the top of this podcast, and Microsoft even admits this in their blog post for the Series S. And they say, quote, the primary difference between the Series X and the Series S, by the way, they sound very similar, is in resolution. Through talking to our customers, we found that many of our fans prioritize frame rate over resolution. So we wanted to build a console that didn't require a 4K TV, end quote. And, and I'm laughing because really it took you talking to fans to understand that people prioritize performance over. Uh, OK, anyway, whatever. You, you could have just looked in the PC space for 30 years, but that's OK. Anyway, they go on to say, quote. The Xbox, and this is where Bradford and I were having this conversation before the show, but this is, they are making it explicitly clear here, okay? Quote, it's designed to play games at 1440p at 60 frames per second with support for up to 120 frames per second, end quote. 
they're not saying 4K in here because this is not meant to be a 4K machine. Now, both the Series S and X are launching on November 10th. The S will be priced at $300. The X will be priced at $500. I think these were pretty much the prices that people were expecting, especially for the X. Nice to get confirmation, um, especially on the S. Now, what else is important to know? Well, we have the specs because I, I like specs. Specs tell us a lot. Um, if you're not really tech savvy, Microsoft put out about an eight minute video with uh, the one of the lead engineers and one of the gears uh, producer, I think, uh, talking or the technical producer, technical lead or something, uh, yeah. talking specifically about the um, Series S and what it can do. They do a good job distilling the this technical conversation into something a layman can understand. And, and I don't say that uh, pejoratively. I, I truly do mean that. Like they explain it in a pretty easy to digest way. Um, as Microsoft themselves said, the biggest difference is that this console is not is going to be a difference in the resolution that they're targeting. It's not going to be targeting 4K. It's going to be targeting 1080p and 1440p. So what this means is that the CPU that they're going to be using in here is going to be the exact same CPU with slightly different clock speeds on the CPU. And it's yeah. it's really, really slight. Honestly, at the end of the day, the CPU is is it's pretty much a constant. You can think about it yeah. really that way. Um because the differences in resolution, the biggest differences are going to be in two places. Number one, the GPU, and number two, the RAM. Why is the RAM going to be different? Well, as you scale out and go to higher and higher <laughs> resolutions, that frame buffer, aka RAM. You're, you need more RAM to accommodate just the sheer number of pixels that you're pushing out and displaying. That's just how these things work. It scales out. Uh, but because we're not targeting 4K anymore, you don't you don't you simply don't need as much RAM. And this is a very clear fact. There's there's a reason why um, more mid-range GPUs and whatnot typically have less RAM than their higher GPU counterparts is because they just don't need to target higher resolutions. Mm -hmm. um, specifically for this chip, this is built on RDNA 2, which has yet to be re uh, revealed. I believe that's October 28th is uh, AMD's hosting that. So yeah, the, the second half, the second third really of this year is going to be very exciting, guys, in terms of tech. But the GPU, so we know that the Series X GPU, this is the GPU in the big console, this is going to have 52 CUs, which is 52 compute units, and they'll be running at a locked 1.8 gigahertz. The S, the Series S, is going to have a 20 CU GPU clocked at 1.56 gigahertz. So it's fewer compute units at a slightly lower clock speed. And again, it's because they simply don't need all that power to push a lower resolution. It's just, you don't. The difference between 1440p and 4K is vast in terms of the computing power required. It's not just some sort of simple like linear jump. That, that's not how these things work. Um, you need a lot more power from 1440p to 4K. That's why the GPU in the X is touted at 12.15 teraflops, whereas the Series S is 4 teraflops, so it's about a third of the power. And that shows you how much raw power you really need to push the 4K. Um, mm -hmm. The other difference, like I mentioned, is in the RAM. So we know that the Series X has 16 gigs total of GDDR6. Of that 16 gigs, 10 gigs is running at 560 gigabytes per second. The remaining six gigs is running at 336 <clears throat> gigabytes per second. Where have we seen this 10 gigabyte number before, Bradford? Hmm. I wonder if it's because of the 3080. Now, this is running off of GDDR6, not GDDR6X, like the upcoming Ampere cards. Mm -hmm. By the way, this should give you an idea of what to expect from AMD's RDNA 2. Expect GDDR6, not 6X. But or, yeah, HBM. God damn it. <laughs> I'm always yeah, going to expect HBM too. I'm I'm always going to be sour on that. God, they wasted an entire generation and a half. Whatever. Okay. Two anyway. generations. Was it two? it was two. God damn it. Vega and Vega 2. 
Uh, Radeon, well, Radeon 7, that was Vega, right? Okay. That was Vega 2. Uh, all right. Um, people are going to be wondering, is 10 gigabytes enough for 4K? The very simple answer is yes, it, it is. It's enough yeah. for 4K. It's, I mean, that's the, that's the, yeah, I mean, you, you don't need, I mean, some people, okay, there are games like Call of Duty, for example, on PC, where I have a 2080 Ti, it has 11 gigs of memory. When I play the game... And I run Riva Tuner, for example, it'll say you're using all 11 gigs. That's not exactly true. The game is requesting 11 gigs of allocation, but what it's actually using is really closer to like four to five. It's not actually using all the 11 gigs. So that 10 gigs that you have uh, of that higher bandwidth RAM is really just kind of as overhead and also to kind of uh, use as uh, if you want to store something there, for example, the quick resume feature, they can utilize some of this in, as part of the RAM. So there you go. Xbox Series X, again, 16 gigs total. 10 gigs is 560 gigabytes per second. 6 gigs is 336 gigabytes per second bandwidth. Moving over to the S, it doesn't have 16 gigs. It has 10 gigabytes eight of which is running at 224 gigabytes per second, and the remaining two is at 56 gigabytes per second. And again, that's plenty. For 1440p, that's plenty. Also brings down the cost. Apart from that, uh, the storage, while it's the same specifications in terms of uh, read and write speeds, etc., instead of a terabyte SSD, you're getting a 512 SSD. I kind of disagree with that, but they probably did that to reduce cost as much as possible. Um, it's still going to have that exact same terabyte expansion card that the Series X has. So if you want to plug in those custom Microsoft and Seagate cards, you can do that. Um, still got the exact same feature set in terms of access to uh, Game Pass, backwards compat, all of that. There's no disk drive, like I mentioned. It's digital only. It's got the same HD, HDMI 2.1 output. It has uh, the same features with respect to ray tracing, variable rate shading, variable mesh shading, like every single other next gen feature that is part of the series X is also part of the series S. Like I mentioned, the only differences is lack of disk drive, smaller GPU, fewer allocation of memory, and that's it. Now, first reactions to this, I'm just going to be extremely blunt. I think 299 for this is an incredible deal. I think it's an incredible value. Bradford, your thoughts? Uh, I think it's a great deal. $299 for a 1440p 60 FPS machine. Uh, that's not bad considering if you want to do 1440p today with graphics cards alone, you're probably spending, you know, 299 bucks. So, yeah, yeah. And, you know, this is, we were, we were mentioning last week, and I still believe this is 100% true that, you know, if you want a, you know, premier next gen experience, Realistically, all you have to do now in your PC is swap a single component, which is the GPU, and swap it for a 3070, and you have something that's better than either uh, Series X or the PS5. Now, if you scale that experience down, though, 299 becomes a very, very, very good value. And we mm-hmm. we know that NVIDIA has uh, you know mid-range cards. And like I mentioned last week, we were talking about a potential 3060 being roughly at the price, uh, the performance of a 2080 or 2080 super. Um, but you know, once you start talking about that kind of, this kind of price point, this is the mainstream price point. Let's, let's be completely blunt here. $300 is a mainstream price point. $500. Yes. I think it's still, you know, a, it's still affordable, but it's, it's, it's a lot of money. $500 is a lot of money. If you're, you know, mm-hmm. kind of on a budget $300 though, you know, that's a lot more palatable. It's a lot. And the thing, the thing that I can't get over is you can go to somebody right now and tell them, Hey, you can get a next gen console with all of the same features as the higher end console. And it's $300 instead of $500. And this person, the, the, they probably don't even care that it's not at 4k because in my own experience, Bradford, probably in your own experience, and according to Microsoft, what their customers are telling them, which I think is laughable, but whatever, people prioritize performance over resolution. Resolution, as this generation has gone on, has become less and less important. The only reason I keep bringing it up is because Microsoft 
is the one that is making the claim of 4K on the Xbox One X, and they consistently don't meet that claim. So, really, that's the only reason to bring it up, is when somebody makes a claim, you have to hold them accountable. But when you look at the games and the engines across this, uh, the, the last half of this generation, resolution has become less and less important. What becomes more important is the quality of the image. And especially with things like NVIDIA's DLSS, which I'm just going to be straight up, I don't think any type of machine learning like that is going to be even possible on these consoles. I just, I have complete doubt that that's even a thing. But Death Stranding, I had, I wrote in my review and I shared examples of DLSS in that game, basically using machine learning to upscale the image, looks better than using my native 4K. It just looks better. And the performance was much better by like about 30, 40 frames. All these modern engines have incredibly competent uh, upscaler techniques. Unreal Engine f uh, 4 and really 5 is going to be nuts is their temporal injection with their temporal upscaling. And you, just the image looks very clean. So what's going to matter more an image that's not native 4k but still looks really good versus oh i can get double the frame rate in this game and it just feels better i can't tell you why it feels better but i know it does feel better like you want that responsiveness and uh like i mentioned gears 5 is going to be running the multiplayer is going to be running at 120 frames per second on a 300 dollars console that's pretty powerful value right there if you ask me now we talked about the series x price which is 500 bucks something else we should talk about with respect to price and value is microsoft had a pretty long xbox wire article today i'm not sure if you read this yet bradford but nope but it's uh really what it is is this thing called xbox all access now this isn't new They've had this since the Xbox One X days, since 2017. But uh, pretty much when I uh, saw that, I kind of had a hunch that it really was going to be useful for the upcoming generation. Um, and that's what it is right here. So basically what this is, is it's really a financing option. That's, that's really what you got to think about it. But basically what will happen is for $25 a month for 24 months, you can walk into a store and buy an Xbox Series S just for 25 bucks down there and you will get the console and Game Pass Ultimate. Game Pass Ultimate includes Game Pass, it includes xCloud, and it also includes, as we were just learned today, EA Play, which is EA's own version of Game Pass for their specific games. $25 a month for the Series S, you can do that. Now, you can do all of that for the Series X as well. The difference is in the price, and it'll be $35. So $25 versus $35. Same value, same deal. But think about this. We're in a time where the economy is in the tank. People are, you know, really trying to save every single penny. Who has $3,300 to drop right now? Some people might, sure. Some people might have $500 to drop right now. But you definitely do. I definitely do, but that's really doesn't matter, right? Like most of the people who are going to want to buy this stuff, that's this is a lot of money to ask for in the, in the middle of a pandemic and a terrible economy. But telling them all of a sudden that, hey, you don't have to pay $300. You can pay $25 and you can have all of this stuff. That's pretty nuts. I mean, that's, that's really nuts. And like I mentioned that Game Pass Ultimate, er, Game Pass is getting uh, EA Play added to it. It's being added to Game Pass Ultimate and also for a regular Game Pass on PC uh, for, at no additional cost, by the way. So it's, it's literally just getting rolled into it. Uh, that's, that's huge. That is so much value. Game Pass is, and I'm going to keep saying this until I'm blue in the face, Game Pass is an absurd value. It is an absurd value. And I'm, and I'm saying this because I, I use Game Pass on PC. It's how I played Gears 5. It's how I played Outer Worlds. Uh, it's how I'm playing Flight Simulator. Flight Sim, yeah. And those those three games are what one hundred and eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. I have not spent anywhere near one hundred and eighty dollars. I haven't even spent anywhere near like probably thirty bucks on Game Pass uh, for those games to play those games, and that's 
insane. I mean, Game Pass is truly a really, really, really good value. So you bundle all of that for $25 a month and you get a next-gen console that plays Gears 5 at 120 FPS multiplayer. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. That's pretty nuts. Mm -hmm. um, all is not uh, roses, though. We had reported a few weeks ago that Halo Infinite was, rightfully, delayed out of 2020. We cited, go back and listen to that podcast. We really, we broke it down and we kind of like why this is a good move, really. Um, but if you noticed, really, honestly, if you noticed, the first entire half of this year up until that news broke was you can play a Halo game on day one again on an Xbox on a brand new console. And really, they were really, really, really pushing Halo. And then it got delayed. Now, Microsoft's first party pretty much doesn't exist and i talked about this previously it's like they really don't have a system seller first party sony doesn't need to have that because they have the momentum and quite frankly the confidence and the trust that they've accrued over the last seven years with their first party producing s tier games pretty much every single one of them really um so they can really coast by on a single game spider-man miles morales and that's that's really all they need sony all they need is one game and they will be fine microsoft has had to play catch up for seven years and so they can't really do that they need to have something so in lieu of halo infinite what is it well really they don't have any first party system sellers they just don't well coincidentally and note the sarcasm assassin's creed valhalla uh, has moved up their release date what by one week so now it just happens to release on the same day as the series s and the series x meaning it's going to release on november 10th um mm -hmm. by the way it's it's releasing on all platforms on that date but it's just happens to coincide with the release dates of these two consoles not only that uh there was a press release uh that I kind of dug up through Gama Sutra, which basically it was it was a general Ubisoft press release uh, there, but crucially the important bit is uh, the discussion about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, when this game was being marketed on the Xbox machines, a couple I think I want to say like May or June or whenever, um, there was that really garbage quote unquote gameplay trailer <laughs> of Valhalla. And we had... You could even call it that. Yeah, and we had um, Ashraf Ismail, who, the um, now former, former disgraced head of <laughs> that studio. Uh, he was talking about, you know, how they're, how Ubisoft is planning on leveraging the Series X uh, features. And specifically, he had just basically mentioned faster loading. That was really it. He just mentioned sort of faster loading with the SSD. And after the fact that it had come out that it would the game would run at least at 30 FPS. Now, at rightfully so, people were like, WTF, this is a machine that is supposed to be much more powerful and this is it. Well, now we have confirmation that actually on the Series X, and I'm going to read this verbatim, on quote, on Xbox Series X, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will run at 60 FPS in full 4K resolution, end quote. The important thing to think about here are the for, the specific words that they use. They said, run at 60 FPS in full 4K. What this doesn't say is targeting 60 FPS, targeting up to 4K. It is mm -hmm. saying in no uncertain terms, 60 FPS in full 4K. What that means... Which I'm actually happy to see but we'll I am too. see if it actually lives up to it. I am too. I'm happy to see that. What what they're saying is that they're pr basically promising a locked 60 frames per second in a native 4K. Um, additionally, what they're also going to uh, bring to this enhanced version is high resolution textures, improved shadow quality, and increased clutter, or Valhalla specifically. Um, mm -hmm. they're both going to take advantage of the direct storage, which is, you know, the fast, uh, the fast loading and everything and the smart delivery, meaning you're just going to get the correct version for whatever Xbox version you buy. You don't have to worry about that. Um, 
this is good to see because these are the kind of experiences that people want out of next gen. And when I say people, I mean your early adopters, the people that you need to evangelize around your product. People who buy this console two or three years down the line, they don't, they're not going to care about performance or resolution, but the people who you need to buy and line up on day one, they do care about this stuff. So it's mm -hmm. important to get out in front and say, yeah, no, 60 FPS, full 4K. Like Bradford mentioned, we're going to have to wait until analysis to see if this actually is 60 FPS and if it actually is a locked 4K. Um, but th nevertheless, this is good to see. This is, I mean, you want that next generation experience for if you pay for, you know, $500. Crucially, what's not mentioned here is we don't know the resolution and frame rate for the Series S version. We, we It's just not said here. Um, so I, I uh, am wondering what's going to happen with that console. I would hope 60 FPS at 1440p or even 1080p, honestly, like that's fine. Crucially, well, the, the 60 the FPS S, is what really matters. Yeah, the Series S isn't touting 1080p, it's touting 1440p. So it needs to be that. And it needs to be 60 FPS. Um, it should be possible. I mean, the, the Series S looks powerful enough to drive Assassin's Creed, to drive that engine at 60 FPS at 1440p, maybe not as jacked out as the visuals of the, you know, the X version, but it should be doable. For me, the most interesting part here is they talk about Watch Dogs Legions, and they don't say anything about what that's going to run at. And that game comes out first, I think. Yeah, I think that's October 20... Is that the same day as Shadowlands? Yeah, I think it's 29th. Jeez. Oh, 29th. Okay, Shadowlands is 27th. Yeah. It's like we don't know how what that's going to run at on the, new so on the new systems, but we know it's going to obviously run. Yeah, those they talk about it. And they say, uh, let's see... Watch Dogs Legion will benefit from hardware accelerated ray tracing of the new Xbox Series X and S. So what to, what that means, guy, and they're they're specifically talking about real time reflect uh, ray trace reflections. Okay, when you're talking about ray tracing on a console, you are talking about thirty frames per second. That's that's just what it is. Like I mentioned, these consoles, I, I highly highly doubt. They have the sufficient enough, you know, dedicated, uh, I guess, machine learning hardware to do the same type of competent upscaling that NVIDIA's touring cards have. I just, I just don't believe AMD has something like that. Certainly, it's probably not going to be in these machines. Um, we would have heard about it, honestly, by now. We really would have if they did. And we haven't. So when you're talking about anything ray tracing on a console, just expect 30 frames per second because that's that's the reality. That's simply the reality. It is a very expensive effect, rightfully so, frankly. I mean, first of all, the fact that people can get ray tracing on a $300 console is a miracle in itself. But like once you have that, you cannot expect, I want 60 FPS. That's just not how this stuff works. Uh, we had a question in chat, so no ray tracing on AC. Uh, no, not on the uh, console versions. I doubt there's going to be ray tracing on the PC versions. Uh, they just... They, they just, haven't said anything about it. They, had, they don't really... Yeah, they haven't said anything about ray tracing on PC. We do know that Watch Dogs Legion on PC is going to get like pretty insane ray tracing actually um and mm -hmm. it's that it's it looks insane from what I, like the screenshots and videos that I've seen the PC version of Watch Dogs Legion just looks nuts. Ray tracing on AC needs to happen though if for no other reason than to be staring at over a lake in Norway and have the northern lights reflected off the water. See okay see I would actually I would actually <clears throat> prefer Okay. Okay. So I, I mean, I'm saying this because in, on a console, you have to pick and choose what you want because oh, no, for, I'm not talking about console. I'm talking about PC. Oh, for PC. I honestly, I, I want, I, rather than the, just the reflections, I want the global illumination. I want, I want the full yeah. Metro Exodus, gorgeous global illumination of England. Just kind of waft. Cause dude, can, like the actual light from the Northern lights would just be nuts. And like, if you had a yeah. fully globally ray traced, yeah, I'm, there's, yeah. I'm sure someone's going to come up with like an injection mod because you can do that now. Um, but yeah, there, there's there's no ray tracing uh, at all in Assassin's Creed. Uh, that's I mean, but that's that's kind of one of the things is so at least we we have confirmation now 60 FPS full 4K Valhalla on Series X. 
We don't know what the specifications will be for Series S, uh, but we'll, we will see. Um, and like I said, it's launching a week earlier. So that's, um, that's the breakdown of the Series S and the Series X. Uh, a couple of bones that I have to pick is that it was a full day before Microsoft confirmed the price for the Series X and the release date for the Series X. So if you recall, on Monday, we understood the, or yesterday, I believe, we understood the price and release date for the Series S, but we had no information on the Series X. Mm -hmm. And they waited a full day, and then they told us. And to me, this just shows, again, just I hate the messaging and the marketing behind Microsoft. Um, because Microsoft, and more broadly, these other companies, specifically in this industry, they want to control the narrative. and damn it all they're going to do everything to have the story play out on their terms even if it logically doesn't make sense for example why wouldn't you just yesterday when the series s stuff was confirmed why didn't you just come out and say by the way this is also for the series x this is the price and the release date for the series x why, why didn't you do that and the occam's razor suggests that well they have a plan they want to stick to their plan no matter what and i i hate that about these companies so when something when you can see something happening just abandon your plan and just do what makes the most logical sense at that point. Like I hate yeah. that. See, for me, I would argue that the way this has been handled, it makes me wonder if this was the plan. And I say that knowing that a lot of these companies have done manufactured leaks in the past. I've had PR people tell me all the time that, you know, they're going to leak it to um, somebody first and then I can run a story after that. You know, I, I've mentioned this on a few podcasts back. I don't want to give examples because I don't want to ever be blacklisted from that because some of these people actually do listen to the show. Um, but it, it happens often enough. And the way that Microsoft played off the leaks this time versus the way they played them off for the last five years leads me to think that this was part of that plan. Um, the only thing I can say that would be kind of put me away from that would be that maybe they were looking at potentially um announced uh announcing it on the 22nd when pre-orders go live um riku in the chat is saying phil spencer said it was supposed to be announced this week on his twitter but who knows how true that is that could be again him just playing you know damage control it could be again a manufactured leak you've had uh, Microsoft employees who worked on this talk publicly about how disappointed they are that, they, that it did leak uh, when they've been able to avoid leaks this entire time. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't manufactured. Just because it was manufactured by PR doesn't mean everybody who was involved was in on it. That's why it's also still called a leak. Um, I, I don't know. For me, it, it shows all the signs that this was planned. The way this has gone out, including the leaking of it on Monday, I think is I think is when the original one leaked, um, that this was all part of their plan. I mean, you had the YouTube uh, channel leak the Series S and the video with that. Within a few hours, you had Windows Central with a source confirming the price, confirming the release date, confirming it exists. Oh, and by the way, also confirming the price of the Xbox One X and its release date. Um there's just so many layers to it that that it really feels like to me as someone who has been in this industry has worked with enough pr people that it, it just feels like this was actually the plan and the way they're playing it off is you know as manufactured as the leak i could be a hundred percent wrong here as well who knows but <laughs> i i I just feel as though the way this has happened, the way this has gone down and can start comparison to the last four years, five years when things have leaked right before E3 and how the team reacted to that. Um, this is just night and day different. And it's not like they had a complete turnover of their social team. They, they haven't. So, yeah, I just, I just, I just interpret this thing as this, this is just a company that was so desperate to control the narrative and they, they respond, That's every company, with, yeah. they respond with these cute little memes trying to be hip and cool and trying to show like hey guys we're a company but we're 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 really we're really listening to you like i hate it, it. i hate it i hate it when companies do it this works, on though. twitter i hate it because people buy into it and they genuinely forget 
that these are faceless companies that don't give a shit. I mean, you look at the stuff that's happening with Apple and <clears throat> Epic and like that is just proof that these people don't care. That's that's the downside though, I think to to the way that social media is consumed is because we not only see these Twitter accounts and the way they interact with not only consumers but other accounts in their own corporate family like the banter going back and forth between xbox game pass and ea play today on twitter and their official accounts were See, kind we're of friends nauseating. like hey yeah. we're, we're just like we're normal it's like no you're the not. thing is it's the thing the thing is is the people who run these are real people and they have their own twitter accounts so if people can put you know faces to these faceless corporations and i think that endears the general public a lot more than if it was just some corporate entity or marketing firm behind it where you didn't know the people or you didn't follow them on their own separate twitter account and get to know them as much as you can obviously through a twitter handle um i think that plays a huge role into this because you you saw this specifically with rage 2 and bethesda i mean this is right out of that that playbook when Rage 2 leaked and the way Bethesda played it off, when you look at how Bethesda has treated leaks and other associated issues with their socials and their, their products over the years, the way, the way Bethesda played it off that time kind of laid the groundwork for all of these companies and gave them the playbook for how to do this. And again, the fact that the people who are then behind these faceless Twitter accounts have their own Twitter accounts that many of the same people follow and could put a face to them and talk about this stuff on their own handles. It, it makes it a lot more human than it really should be. Um, which to the detriment of society or whatever, you know, whether it's good or bad, you know, history will, will let us know in a couple, in a couple decades when the world ends, whether if it doesn't end this year, but I, I don't know. I, I see it as just, this is, this is all marketing. This is, the way you do marketing now this is literally what's being taught in marketing classes in colleges because it works i i absolutely hate it like i hate it on so many fronts number one i can't like people are so dumb to like actually fall for this and they forget in the case of apple and epic these are literally this is a two trillion dollar company and a multi-hundred billion dollar company basically using consumers as soldiers and making having consumers hold the bag as they have a petty playground fight i mean well and then they go and talk about like hey we're we need your help like uh blah 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 memes it's like god damn it i i can't stand it i absolutely i hate it so much and pe the fact that people actually fall for this stuff just makes me even more angry because i can't stand the marketing there's side of no it. critical thought I can't stand the marketing side of it, but I think in the case of like Apple and the way people are reacting to Epic's lawsuit against them, a lot of it is obviously just people on social media wanting to be able to play Fortnite on their iPhones again. Uh, a lot of it though are companies who couldn't even dream of being able to do what Epic is currently doing. And yeah, Epic isn't a little guy by any stretch of the imagination, but compared to Apple, they are definitely a little guy. Um, and they probably are the only company out there with the means to be able to do this to Apple. So when you look at it from that standpoint, it's a little bit more understandable. But then when App when Epic tries to mobilize its Fortnite fanboys, they're holding the games it's... they created at ransom yeah. to their own consumers because they want to basically <coughs> they want to recruit their consumers as soldiers in a crusade against a multi trillion. I cannot stand this shit and. This is, I mean, stuff like this. I mean, we saw with with uh, Bradford mentioned Bethesda, but like real is, I mean, really, this entire generation coming up to really this year, uh, building up to the launch of these consoles, I have been railing on Microsoft's marketing. This is just a part of marketing. What you're seeing on social media is marketing, and I hate this. I hate this so much. I hate that this continues to happen. I hate that people actually fall for it. Like they're so dumb enough to actually fall for this that when something really does happen to affect them, they just forget about it. I mean, I cannot believe this shit actually works. It, it blows my mind. Um, I, I really hate this. this. This type of marketing has to change. Honestly, it really does. It won't, but it really should. That's, 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 my, that's my rant. Um, Bradford, you wrote something in here about all access with respect to um, some maths that you did. Oh, I didn't do them. My older brother did them because that's I don't do some maths do that you're claiming you did. 
<clears throat> I never once claimed I did them. Some mats that I'm just giving you credit for. Okay, that's a bit more truthful. Um, give me a sec. I have uh, one of our writers. He's made a video for the Outer Worlds. No, for New World, I think. And he's trying to get it to me so we can get it on the YouTubes. Um, cool. That's actually not something I was expecting. Awesome. So uh, the, the interesting part, we talked about the um, All Access which may actually be the way I buy this console because now that I have a freaking car payment and my health insurance is stupid high because I have the diabetes, um, my expendable income in my house is basically non-existent now. Rich. Um, not rich. If I was rich, this wouldn't be an issue. Um, I would just have all, why all the money. Why would you buy this console though? You have a PC that's better. For work. But you don't need it. For, I mean... I will if we need to do a review and the only code we're given is a Xbox One X code. That won't happen because it's uh, Xbox Series X code. That, that yeah, won't happen. Dude, we do console MMO reviews all the time. Yeah, but like with, with the with the with the um what what the hell is the word I'm thinking about? Play anywhere crap? Like you don't need a console specific code. I can't play my Xbox version of Bless Unleashed on my PC right and now. Why would you want to? I'm not saying I would do. I'm just saying there will be circumstances. There will be circumstances where I will likely need a console. I refuse to it's accept just, that. I mean, you also don't do MMO reviews for us. So no, 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 no. Like I just, just, just somebody gives you a console code. Just be like, nope, this game doesn't exist on this platform. I'm going to play this on PC. Okay. So back to the realm of reality. <laughs> <laughs> um, because not all MMOs are made for PCs anymore. They are all and, made for PCs. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> my brother who is his, he's looking at these consoles because he doesn't have a gaming PC. He has a gaming laptop that actually runs games pretty well. He's pretty happy with it, but he can't just go throw a 3080 in there. A, he can't afford one and B that's not how graphics technology works. Um, so He's looking at these consoles as a way to be able to play some of these games better than he can currently play on his laptop. He's got a laptop that has a 1660 Ti. It's got a 8700, the you know laptop variant of that uh, CPU. It's not a bad laptop. It's a good middle of the road gaming laptop. Um, but obviously, it's going to get to the point where that 1660 Ti is not going to be able to play some of the more modern games. And so he's looking at this and he kind of did this breakdown because for him, the way he's going to be able to buy this is using Xbox all access. And he came to a startling conclusion when he did the maths and the series S actually, let me, let me back up a little, little bit uh, paying for it. All access on paper looks as though it's going to be cheaper than buying them outright with the same services they come with. Uh, the way he broke it out is the series S is 300 bucks. So for all access, you're looking at 25 bucks per month and that all access cost price also includes Xbox live ultimate, which has obviously Xbox game pass project X cloud and Xbox live gold. Okay. All services that you're going to need or want, if you want to be able to take full advantage of your system, whether you believe in paying to use your internet, twice or not okay um <laughs> so 25 if you pay this off over two years which is i think the contract length of the xbox yep, all 24 access months 24 months so two years you're paying 600 dollars. plus you know obviously there might be some you know financing you know percentage you pay as well but the principal cost is going to be 600 bucks over two years however if you buy the xbox one s outright as well as buy two years worth of xbox live ultimate which comes with um obviously project x cloud xbox live gold it's actually 660 dollars before taxes and everything else so you're actually getting it for less money doing it through all access the same is true for the series x the series x at 35 bucks a month is 840 or if you pay it out outright it's less of a less of a savings but if you pay it out outright over two years if you pay it out outright plus the you know two two years worth of Xbox Live Ultimate, it's uh, eight hundred sixty bucks. So it, it, normally, when you look at financing options, you're paying more. I worked in retail for years. I worked for two companies that offered financing. Uh, the music store that offered financing that I worked with, the financing was so terrible that I felt more, more morally 
in the wrong whenever I offered it to somebody or whenever someone asked me about it because it was such a high interest rate that I just could not in any good conscience recommend it to anybody because it didn't matter how sterling your credit was. That was your interest rate. It was like 28.9%. It was stupid. Um, I worked for Pier 1, who's in, whose entire sales team tracked how many credit cards you sold. And that interest rate wasn't much better. It got better with your credit, but I think it's still capped out at 16%. Um, so if you were financing a huge item and you didn't pay it off in that time period, you were paying much more. Um, this to me is, a, is actually kind of makes it an even better deal. It's interesting. Just like two or three weeks ago, we were talking about how the Xbox One, uh, Xbox Series S and X aren't really a compelling buy. And I think when you look at the broader landscape of the gaming industry, when you look at the fact that really the only games you have to play on this are games you can also play on your PC. Oh, by the way, you can also buy a $500 graphics card that will outperform this for probably the next 10 years. Um it's still not a compelling buy in that aspect, but if you're only looking at playing on an Xbox, where that's where all your friends play, or you're just a diehard Xbox fanboy, or you don't have the money to buy a full PC or don't even have a PC you could just upgrade with a graphics card, being able to pay it off like this and it not you know, kind of rape your wallet is actually pretty compelling. Um, like I said, I'll be buying one of these for work, uh, just like I'll be getting the PS5 for work, and... Rich. This is likely how I'm getting the the Series X because I'm I'm not going to bother with the Series S if I want to play 1440p I'll just play on my PC, but I am interested in the Series X, um, purely because I have a 4K TV. So. Rich, rich. So do you? You have a better 4K TV. I mean, I never deny that I'm not rich. I'm just pointing out the fact that you are, and you continue to deny it. I'm not rich. If I were rich, you my bank rich. account wouldn't be as low as it is. You you are rich because you can have all I of am, these things. I am not rich, yeah. Um, I think the PS5 normal version is probably going to be 550 bucks, And the uh, digital version is probably going to be 500 bucks. I, I mean, regardless, I, I think the regular PlayStation 5, the one with the disk drive, is going to be more expensive than the Series X. We already know the $500 price point for the Series X. I just, given the exotic hardware, I mean, creating a custom driver or controller rather for that SSD isn't cheap from an R&D standpoint. It, it's just, it's not cheap. Like, especially on day one, like in a couple of years, yeah, sure. That's how consoles work. But like now, it's it's not going to be cheap. So I personally believe uh, that the regular PlayStation 5 with the disk drive is going to be more. I'm, I'm guessing it'll be $550 and the digital version will be $500 because really, I mean, uh, if re all that is, it's, it's basically a Blu-ray drive, right? Like those are what, like 20, 30 bucks at Well, most? it's not just the Blu-ray drive, but for every single system that uses the Blu-ray drive, they have to pay themselves it's, it's really weird they have to pay themselves but they still have to send money to sony's like entertainment division to license out the the blu-ray technology for the system because playstation didn't create it it's it's stupid xbox has to do the same thing so that extra if there is an extra cost that's part of it so i mean regardless it's not going to be what my point is that you're not going to see a drastic price difference between the digital version the all digital version and the regular version. I mean, the, the difference that you're seeing between the S and the X, you're not going to see that price difference. That, no, the digital and the, the regular version of the PS5 are the same console, just one has a drive. Exactly. That's, there, it. that's, that's exactly it. And so do not do not expect a massive, like people, I was saying they're going to be a $100 difference. There's no way. No. There's no way there's going to be a $100 difference. I think at most you're going to see $50, $50 difference. Um, the one I'm going to get is the all digital version. Um, just because I, I literally haven't bought a physical game in years. The only thing I actually buy physical games anymore is for the switch. Um, but that's because I think I, I, I like their solution is a cartridge is so elegant. Um, but yeah, in terms of consoles, I, I have not bought a physical game on a PlayStation or an Xbox in this entire generation, really, except for maybe Killzone. I've, I've bought a few, but 
I don't think I've bought anything. I've, I have not bought a single one for my Xbox. I'll tell you that. Uh, except for the night my Xbox came out. Um, I got Rise, Son of Rome, and the zombie game that came out at launch. And Forza. Dead or Alive? That... Is it Dead or Alive? No. Was it no, Dead or Alive? Dead or Alive is a, a fighting game. Oh, um, God damn it. What, what was it called? I, I cannot remember for the life of oh my me. my God. But it was, really, it was that really bad Capcom game. Dead Rising 3. Dead you, Rising, you. okay. Um, so, Jesus Christ. Uh, but for my PlayStation, I have bought multiple. Like, I actually imported a copy. I, I, I say I. A friend of mine bought a copy of Persona 5 The Royal when it came out in Japan and sent me a digital copy that he bought for me as well. Um, but I, you're actually thinking, thinking they're a little bit higher than I do. I think there's still going to be the $50 difference, but I think it's going to be $499 and $449. I don't think we're going to see either console break that five hundred dollar uh, price point, simply because that's 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 where you start getting into like in terms of just consumer mentality and the way retail sales work. There's a reason why things cost ninety nine, you know, X dollar and ninety nine yeah, cents because odd, once you odd, hit odd even pricing, yeah, once you get to that that next level, it just completely changes the cognition of the retail of, of the consumer. So I think we're going to see the, the the main console be the same price as it's going to be priced exactly with Xbox, but I think we're probably not going to see anything more than a fifty dollars difference as well. It's just the other way. The the reason I um, say that we're going to see a uh, it's going to be above five hundred dollars is because if you go back and look through all of Sony's um, what little there is of of Sony talking about pricing they have never taken the Microsoft approach because Microsoft has always, Phil Spencer has always like said, you know, that we're confident on the price. It's going to be X, Y, and Z, whatever. But Sony has always been very, very coy about it. And they have always pushed. We, we're, we're, they're, they're basically like, we want you to think about pricing in terms of the value that you're getting with the machine and reading between the lines, you can say, okay, basically it's going to be an expensive console. Um, so because yeah. of just the, what they've, uh, I think Jim Ryan was the one that said that a couple of months ago. Um, that's why I'm thinking it's actually going to be above $500. But I personally, I think if Sony could, they would, they would price this thing at like 600 bucks, but clearly, I mean, they can't do that. They, they've got to be very cognizant of 599 us dollars. Um, so in my opinion, I think they're going to get close. They'll try to get as close as they realistically can without actually doing it. Um, Either way, I'm I'm getting a PS5 um, at launch. We still don't know actual pricing or pre-order information or release date information for that yet, by the way. And honestly, these companies, I mean, Sony just needs to do it at this point. They I, they just need to they just need to tweet out tomorrow. This is the price. This is the release. This is the pre-order information. And just just do it. Um, I don't know. I, I think no matter what, I, no matter what they have to know by now, they cannot beat two ninety nine. They just can't. So just, just say your price, man. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't disagree. Um, I, I, I really just, they just, we should have known the price months ago. We should have known the price back in June. We should have known. The I get price, it's a, the it's a pandemic year. Revealed. Yeah. Well, I get not revealing the price right then because it's, uh, you may not have all of the, um, you know, cost and stuff added up. Who knows if manufacturing even started at a at a scale that would. No, no, I meant do, I, I meant, I meant when they had their uh, first uh, not not their Mark Cerny lecture when they had their actual like stream showcase when they showed off like this is what it looks like. Yeah, like, sure, yeah, sure. That's what then I mean. then then they should know. Uh, I get that this has been a weird year and you know distribution for every industry and manufacturing for every industry has been completely just thrown Gone. to the fucking wind. Um, but you would know well in advance based, you know, the pandemic started almost seven months ago. Now, uh, you would know by now whether or not this was going to be delayed due to the pandemic, or if the cost was going to be changed due to the pandemic, you should have plenty of time to have given us a price. It's still crazy and irresponsible in my mind that Sony has not come out and you know we're, we're sitting here talking about how great a deal the xbox series s is and how nice it is to finally know how much this xbox series x is and how much a great deal game pass is and and you know what looks like it could be a good deal in all access microsoft shouldn't have waited this damn long either no it's, like, it's this a was second, incredibly irresponsible too it's a second week of september 
Yeah. Like, think about this. I mean, they are two months, <clears throat> two months away from the console launch, and they just now announced the price yeah. and the release. That's insane. I mean, one of the things that, that kind of dulls the edge and the sting from this a little bit is the fact that you have a because my biggest issue with the way these were not being talked about was the fact that this is a year that is every industry has been devastated by pandemic and you have millions upon millions of people out of work so being able to offer a way for people to buy this at their pace is it kind of dulls the edge here a little bit but still i mean it's it's really irresponsible because you're now going to have a mad dash for september 22nd yep. if you're planning on pre-ordering this on on that day get your family members involved to Good save luck. you space it's going to basically be like trying to order an iphone on the on that day uh and if my text threads are anything to be you know gone by uh for most people when they try to do this if you're like brian you're not going to get one um <laughs> so uh, this is it's a reason why I don't typically buy things at launch. I I will get a Series X at launch if I can. I'll try to pre-order it through my my local store. Um, but it's it's in my mind it's just incredibly irresponsible, and I'm still s incredibly furious with both these companies, Xbox included, because we should have known this months ago. That way, people who were gonna go all access and maybe couldn't get qualified would still have time to save up. Yeah. You know, uh, for us to not know the PlayStation price or release date to less than two months uh before november because i'm pretty sure we can say with certainty this is going to launch in november as well yeah um it, it's just asinine completely asinine and there's no excuse for it anymore at the, all the other thing is i mean like i i i am one of those people that do uh especially for hardware right hardware is something that you want to get quickly in terms of like uh, getting ahead of the queue and ordering um and for me, I, I don't really have an issue with that, but you have to remember I'm buying just for myself. There's only, I only have to worry about myself when you're talking about a family, like with all of these other people, like you have to coordinate, you have to think about all of these other things. And it's like, it just magnifies the problem that Bradford is talking about in terms of planning and budgeting and stuff. Um, the other thing Riku mentioned crazy. We're not, we've not really seen anything running on series X hardware at this point. And you're, he's right. Like we have not seen any substantial gameplay running on this next gen console. Again, remember halo infinite was not running on the series X. It was running on a PC. So what have we actually seen substantial actual gameplay from running on this console we haven't we really haven't we haven't seen it for um uh playstation either well actually no that's not true we've seen ratchet and clank we've actually seen extensive pre gameplay of ratchet and clank um running on ps5 twice really um series x we haven't really seen anything uh so this is <laughs> this is another thing like they have to show in the next two months for really they should have shown this in may they need to show this is a game that you can get on day one and it will look like this. It will run like this on series S and series X. Boom. They haven't done that. They simply haven't done that. So yeah, I think the, uh, the launch of both of these machines from Sony and from Microsoft are being handled exceptionally poorly. Uh, there's this, I, it's just inexcusable that we have had to wait this long for any actual information on these machines. And we we're still waiting, really, to some extent. Um, we're still waiting for gameplay running on the Xbox machines, and we're waiting for pricing and um, release date information for the Sony machines. So that that's 2020. Meanwhile, you'll be able to buy a, a graphics card next month that will stomp all over these machines. So, you know, have your fun. Um, At the same price as one of them. Yeah, yeah. At the same price. And I'm being reminded, Call of Duty multiplayer trailer was captured on PlayStation Five. Yeah, well, I mean we've we've seen the game running on we've seen games running on the system before. I mean the gameplay footage for Valhalla has all been running on Xbox Series X. They've they've said that. Um, we saw in the Series S trailer today Gears Five running on the Series S. Uh, all of the gameplay, like all of the things that we saw running on, um, I think in the Series S trailer the other day was running on a series S as well. So we, we've seen like incredibly manicured and 
uh, snippets really snippets but we haven't seen like I, I mentioned this on the show i think it wasn't last week i think it was the week before when we started talking about this uh uh pricing and, and crap this is actually the biggest issue with not having trade shows this year with not having press events uh where we could go and actually go hands-on with these consoles because you don't have independent or uh non-biased uh you know entities playing these and giving their opinions and giving their their captures um microsoft is and sony have both been able to incredibly control that aspect of the marketing that would normally not be in their control past a certain point yeah i mean and so, what i mean is like we we have we might have seen snippets of that like in the series X, uh series s stuff god i hate this name but what i mean like we, when we saw both of the ratchet and clank previews i mean they, those were extended gameplay sessions of that game we we could get yeah. an idea of what it looked like what the ray tracing looked like what the it ran like what the gameplay mechanics were like but you can't get that with the snippets that they're showing us you just you can't discern that type of information and that's important information to have two months well, out that, from a launch that's that's why i'm saying like it, it's incredibly detrimental to this entire launch cycle to not have those press you know impressions because at all these events in the past years even the year that the xbox one x launched um it was announced actually every single system at these events had capture cards set up for you to just plug in a usb and capture your own gameplay uh to then put on your own channel or uh twitter feed or whatever so you could show unedited unaltered gameplay from these that system um we don't have that and so th these companies are being incredibly close to the vest and it's it's insanely stupid that we don't know this but it also from a marketing standpoint makes sense uh because they're not going to show something that's not ready at least this way they can completely control it and show only what you want only what they want you to see and it sucks but it's the nature of 2020 right now and hopefully this pandemic and proving that you can do digital events like this doesn't take that aspect out of the gaming you know launch cycles and news cycles for years to come because it's it's I think the most detrimental aspect of 2020s gaming industry is not being able to get those independent voices out in front and showing things that you would typically see that can't be controlled by these companies. So, when so. Ne next time people say, oh, Microsoft is so pro-consumer, pause and think, how is it pro-consumer to not show substantial extended gameplay running on a next generation machine? It's not. How is it how is it pro consumer to hold the pricing information and the release date information and the pre order date information as long as you possibly can? It's, it's not. not. So it's completely irresponsible. Again, this is this is this goes back to the marketing that I've been hyping on for eight months. I hate this. Do not fall for their shit because that's all it is. It's just bullshit. God, I hate this marketing. Okay, I can't wait for these consoles to launch so this shit can be over, man. Like, I, seriously, this this stuff needs to end. They need to be out so we can just get them in hand. Uh, speaking of this shit being over, uh, I think I think we can probably end mm -hmm. there. Um, so yeah, how what we're working on and how to reach these keys. Uh, we have some pretty cool articles hitting, and I had a weird thought on Twitter this week that I'm probably turning into an article for next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we have our review of Kingdom of Amalur went live on Monday. Uh, today, our review of the Outer Worlds DLC went live today. So make sure you go read those. Uh, we had a pretty cool little fun um, housing showcase from Emily on the site today that is going to turn into its own is column. That a thing now? About. Okay, cool. Yeah, turning into his own little column talking about housing systems, not just in Final Fantasy XIV, though that's the game we're going to probably focus on first more because that's what she has. Um, going into things like Lotro and ESO, because housing is one of those features that people just expect to be an MMO. And it's kind of criminal that World of Warcraft really doesn't have it if you don't count the uh, outpost or whatever they're called from, like Legion, I think it was. Um, so go check that out. We had an article at the end of last week from Nick Shively 
about the MMO drought. I got a lot of really good conversation and he makes some pretty good points. If you link back to the MMO industry, uh, the last major AAA MMO to come out from the West was 2014. Two of them released in 2014. One of them doesn't. One of them exist. doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I was say. Okay. Uh, Wildstar came out. ESO came out. Wildstar was shuttered in 2016. ESO is still going pretty strong, even though their last expansion just wasn't up to the same quality as the previous ones. Um, <clears throat> from a technical so here, standpoint, it was yeah, it was bad. Uh, not even from a technical standpoint. I don't think the story was anywhere near as good. Well, you're uh, wrong. Skyrim itself, I mean, Eastern, Western Skyrim, it was cool, but it was also like, okay, what's new here? Um, Blackreach was pretty cool, but it was also like, okay, once you've seen one part of Blackreach, you've pretty much seen it all. Um, so it, it was just not all around the same quality. Um, so yeah, go read his article. Um, I had a pretty in-depth interview with the CCP guys as well. We had a lot of cool stuff hit the site in the last two months. Ever since we've been able to open up to freelancers and get some great ideas and great writers in, not to say that our current staff wasn't great. They truly are, and they've been pumping out some really amazing articles too. But we've been able to bring in some new voices as well, and it's really bolstered what we were doing. Um, so definitely go check that out. Uh, like I said, we have... We had two reviews hit this week, and I think we may actually have a third if he's able to get it in on time uh, by Friday. We'll have uh, our review of Spellbreak, which is the battle royale that we've streamed before um, from Proletariat, the one where you're kind of like the dudes with the fire and the electric gauntlets and crap. That I had no fire... idea what was going on. Yeah, that officially released uh, last week, and uh, we are in the process of finishing up our review of that too. Epic? Um it's on Epic, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's also crossplay with Switch, PS4, and Xbox. Oh, nice. So. Crossplay all of the things, you guys. Yeah, crossplay, cross save, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's basically like Fortnite with spells. And yeah, it's still running on Unreal Engine 4. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye on the site. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up this week. If you're interested at all about the EVE Online war that's going on, uh, Shank wrote about it today. So the, the check cost that out. of that it's war, expensive. and uh, as you reminded me, it's not even. I mean, it still blows my mind that like it's it's expensive, but I mean the battles in this war still aren't even reaching the uh, levels of prices that we saw in, in just Punic wars battle. in just one battle. I mean, in 2018, you had the million dollar battle, which actually came short, but still was a staggering nine hundred ninety six thousand dollars if you translate the isk and the if you translate the plex cost. Uh, into that so um we have a cool final fantasy 14 article hitting tomorrow riku as well um and we actually have another one next week we have a lot of cool stuff guys i can't even keep track of it which is kind of sad because it's my job to keep track of it so uh stay this, tuned to the site shank this, do you have anything specific yeah, you're just gonna say this fall is going to be insane uh there are uh, there's a lot of hardware between graphics cards and co obviously the consoles coming out. Um, we have a huge number of major game releases, mm -hmm. both MMO and not MMO. For example, like Shadowlands is coming Shadowlands. out. Yep. That's a huge one. Um, and we have, you know, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We have Cyberpunk, probably the most anticipated game of 2020, really, uh, for most people. So... There's a lot of stuff coming out uh, before the end of this year is done, so just stay tuned. Maybe by the end of this year, too, Lotro will work. So. <laughs> Every single time they bring the servers down for maintenance, I I seriously am just afraid it's not going to come back up. Like I, I have their Twitter account set to give me notifications on my phone whenever they tweet, and I'm always concerned the next tweet is going to be we're experiencing issues and we'll have to write another article. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of stuff happening. Uh, we're being told we should try Rogue Company. Uh, I, I, I don't know what that is. It's okay. So it's a game running on, uh, it's on Epic game store. This was, uh, shown. Oh, on it's that one. Yeah. It's that one. Okay. It yeah, actually looks just, really cool. There are just too many games coming out. Speaking of games coming out. Remember when I said at the top of the show that I bought Tony Hawk's pro skater on my PC, on my, um, uh, on my xbox because i would have rather played there but i regretted not buying the pc version instead yep uh, i went and checked my epic account 
And it turns out that my press account came with a copy of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Wow, on PC. you wasted so I, fifty dollars for wasted no reason. Fifty dollars for no reason. Yes. Can you even get a refund through Microsoft? Oh, oh no! I've put in like twelve hours of You've, Tony God. Hawk at this point. Yeah, I saw that because uh, I was updating it for a game I have to... That is how rich uh, you are. You can just waste $50 on a game you already have. Oh, no, I'm pretty pissed that I spent $50 on this game. And just walk away without a single scar. Normally, no, I'm pretty scarred. Normally, I get an email from from Nick saying it's been added to my account, and I didn't see this one. I saw the one about Kingdom of Amalur getting added to my account, so I was going to install that, and I just happened to see Tony Hawk sitting in my account when I did. So, so rich. I'm so pissed. Uh, anyways, that's the end of the show. You can reach us at GTI Podcast. You can follow uh, the site at, obviously, MMORPG.com. You can follow myself at LOTR Lore. Just, you know, press F in your tweet to me right now. Uh, you can follow Brian at Silent Fury 007. You can follow Shank at Shank the Tank. Yes, you can visit us at GamingTheIndustry.com if you want an RSS feed of the show. And you can visit MMORPG.com for everything Bradford just talked about. We have a lot of stuff coming up um, and so already in the stuff. works. Uh, this show is on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and pretty much anywhere else you can get podcasts. Join us every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. for new episodes. I stream to my Twitch, YouTube, and Mixer. Not Mixer, sorry. Uh, Periscope. <laughs> Mixer's dead. Uh, Bradford generally streams to the MMORPG channels on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, he's not now because his internet is just gone. So, um, but yeah, yeah, pretty much. You can get a uh, on-demand version of the show on my YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com/shankthtank. There's a gaming the industry playlist. You can either click it and minimize it and just listen to it like a normal podcast, or you can uh, follow along with the websites and other links and stuff that we've got uh, as we're following through the show. That's it for tonight, though. Let's go ahead and say our goodbyes. Guys, I'm really pissed off about this. I don't think you guys, I don't think it's coming through in my voice how actually mad I am at myself for this Tony Hawk's thing. I'm going to go buy Tony Hawk for my PS4 and just not even play it, just a silent protest. I, you can afford it. That's the thing. I 